Hello and welcome back. Here we have another eBay special. I picked this up for the princely sum of five pounds off of my favourite auction site. Uh, this is a HF12-3 FM, a three-channel CB walkie-talkie from 1981. Um, now this is, seems to be a fairly omnipresent radio when you look at uh, eBay, uh, so much so that I managed to snag another one, but I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit later on. Anyway, this one in particular has a three channel selection switch, a volume on off and a squelch, which is nice when it works, and also a call tone on the side there. A nicely made radio this, um, I want to say uh, German made, uh, but it, as we can see there it's made in Hong Kong, but it is nonetheless um, a German company that oversaw the design and the manufacture of the radio, which is uh, normally always a good thing. Um, now, construction-wise, there was no easy way I could see into the battery compartment at first, um, but um, it's something that uh, I did try and uh, mess around with a little bit later on, and you'll see that the, it's a little bit weak, and there's also a, um, a ding in the front of the speaker grill there, which is a shame, but it's not something that can easily be repaired, but it shouldn't impact the, the radio. Anyway, now inside we have the ubiquitous 8-cell um, battery pack. Now um, what can often happen with these radios is that uh, the eBay sellers will sell them without that pack in and uh, leaving just a 9 volt clip exposed and they'll plug a 9 volt battery into it and, it and it won't work of course so if you do ever get one of these uh, it's not uh, a, d a dead deal if you, it comes without these battery connectors because you can get them as you can see this one is looks to be the original one and has suffered from the usual poor quality batteries um, which have corroded the battery terminals there. Now it's very very important if you do get one in this uh, condition to either replace it for a brand new one or to actually make sure that you thoroughly clean these. Now I had a little go with my fibre tipped pencil on this um, which I did think would be a little bit hard going for it because these are, uh, are not really meant to take the surface of the metal off and um, so I had to actually use a very light emery cloth uh, and to actually clean these up in the end because the fibre tip pencil wouldn't touch them but these seem to be okay now and uh, I've checked continuity through it uh, one thing to mention though is always check the 9 volt side of these packs if you ever do do these it's easy to do the 1.5 volt cells and miss out the 9 volt connections which invariably also corrode as well must have had quite a leak in there the original uh, protection, protection on the label seemed to still be on it so I removed that uh, some of you might shriek and let's just have a listen to it and see what it sounds like my 3d printer is running in the background so you have to excuse me the usual crackly volume control and the squelch unfortunately doesn't seem to work but if you keep watching you'll, you'll see how we get around that problem a little bit later on in the video and uh, it um, channel selection switch is a little bit scratchy as well uh, again something that uh, the usual switch cleaner normally sorts out so uh, removal was just a single screw in the top of the case and um, and uh, what you can see here um, that, now I did think that these color coded crystals was something that had been done by a, a, a user but that's actually done in the factory um, that these marks I've seen them on other variants of this radio so um, there were signs inside this radio that it had had a screwdriver or two in it over time and um, I removed the pot knobs and gave them a, a switch clean there and um, the, uh, the the potentiometer seemed to clean up really nice with just a little blast. Now the this radio is slightly unusual in that it uses a frequency doubler on the transmit so the transmit crystals are half of the transmit frequency and here you can see the common TX oscillator doubler. Now this uses uh, any of the three crystals and effectively doubles up the frequency before it goes to the amplification stage. So that's something to be aware of. If you do buy one of these radios and you check your crystal frequencies, don't be alarmed because very often they use an IF, an intermediate frequency, or they will use a transmit doubler as you see there. So this is the first time I've seen a double stacked board like this and uh, this kind of arrangement and um, I spent some time going, printed off the picture of the radio and spent some time going through and highlighting all of the inductors and uh, the components. Now in the brochure that you get with this walkie-talkie this is evident but I didn't have it at the time that I did this repair. 
Uh, one thing to mention when you do do these repairs is always check those leads. If these boards have been out for any uh, anyone's messed around with them, those wires very often go down to the last um, strand in the wire. So always remake those when you redo them. Cut them and strip them and remake all the speaker wires and the power wires and the antenna wires. Don't really see the point in the uh, tone function on these radios, but power wise it's doing under just under under a half a watt here, not the two watts as specified. Uh, even though this uh, the, the power transistor used in this radio is more than capable, and you can see the transmit frequency is a little bit high. This should be um, 27.73125, and um, so a little bit of alignment is required on this particular radio. As it's not to be surprised, there I switched to channel 19. So the the three channels here are seven. 14 and 19 on the three selector switches all producing roughly the same power but as you can see there the the transmit frequency is out so the the TX00 will need to be aligned the TX00 is common to all three channels so there's no individual alignment uh, possible of each channel the only thing the only, sometimes the, the, the crystals can drift and uh, you'd have to replace the crystals and it's certainly not worth doing that in a radio of this price the crystal will cost more than i paid for the radio so anyway the two trans the two inductors to use for the transmitter alignment are l9 and l10 so this is for the oscillator doubler and i set this on channel 14 which is obviously in between 7 and 19 to get it somewhere in the middle so it was fairly easy to align this up so it's pretty much spot on uh, there as you can see and um, it, as it happens it was then okay on 7 and on 19 that isn't always the case when you're doing these kind of alignments so you just have to align it as best as you can unless you're doing it for a customer or somebody that's willing to pay for replacement crystals now one thing I was going to show I always use these ceramic trimmers when I'm doing this never ever put a metal bladed uh, tool in those uh, in those trimmers otherwise you'll damage them as you can see here with some transmitter alignment we managed to get um, uh, about 0.7 of, of a watt out of this now so it's crept up a little bit and it's still on frequency so there was a little bit of alignment in there and so once we've, I was happy with that we moved over to the signal generator to do a basic receive alignment and uh, this is uh, where things get quite interesting um, I didn't realize this signal generator does put out a lot of um, RF outside of the box, <laughs> let's just say. So um, I think I think I should probably invest in a in a better quality signal generator. But this is certainly okay for what I'm doing here with <coughs> cheap CB handsets, if you like. So anyway, watch on, and we shall align the receive side of these radios. This is uh, the first part of a two-part uh, series I'm going to do on the alignment of these sets because I, I do have another radio exactly the same as this on the way to do a radio-to-radio -radio test. We've got quite a large signal coming in now relatively. I'll just check, you can hear the tone on here. I'll just check the step attenuator. So there's 1 dB, 2, 4, starting to go, 8, a bit of hiss now, 16, that's the real difference there, isn't it? 20, another 20, and another 20, and the signal's gone, pretty much. So that's useful. That'll be a useful aid. We're not after, with these walkie-talkies, we're not after uh, measuring the sensitivity. We just want to improve the sensitivity, so we'll adjust the receive to get the maximum sensitivity. Right, it's a couple of days later and we're uh, we're going to inject a very low level signal or as low a level as we can get away with the sensitivity of this anyway into the radio. As you can see, we've got we've got a signal in there, fairly low level. I think a little bit of noise on receive as well there. I think it could be the supply. And then based off of my uh, diagram and the circuit diagram, we'll go through, really there's only I don't want to touch the discriminator side of the uh, of it here because I haven't got um, a, a sweep generator to really set that up properly. So I'm, I've only really stuck with three inductors to tune this: uh, L3, L4, and L5 uh, there in the, in the in the front end. So we'll 
we'll do that and we'll get it as sweet as we can and um, we'll take it down as low as we can and that's about as good as we can do really right that's about as sensitive as I'm going to get this I think um, <clears throat> without too much playing around I did in the end adjust the discriminator for maximum received audio on here and that improved things a bit um, but the main improvement came from inductor L5 the yellow inductor there that seemed to be of the three the one that really brought it up the, the best so I think this is about as good as I'm going to get this um, the other problem with this is the squelch isn't working and I think uh, we haven't um, done the deviation uh, I haven't got any real way of checking the deviation other than to try it against a, a CB at the minute but um, I can adjust the deviation with that uh, potentiometer there and we'll we'll check and see what it sounds like on the CB or the SDR and then we'll see if we can get the squelch working because at the moment the squelch control isn't doing anything well, I've just removed capacitor C56 there in the squelch circuit and got it on the meter and it uh, has gone high now that's that's 50% higher than it should be which may make all the difference on the squelch I'm not sure we'll we'll change that anyway but looking at how high that's gone it might not be a bad idea to recap the whole radio um, but uh, I'll take a, a judgment on that in a second but um, so we'll try swapping this one over to see if that brings the squelch back in we need to there's some reason that this Q7 isn't isn't switching on yeah, I can't spend too much time on this but um, I'm hoping that a bit of um, resoldering work and a couple of component swaps will, will fix the problem but I can't spend hours on this uh, so we'll have to have to hope we crack it. Right, rather than go fiddling around checking transistors I just recapped the whole radio and uh, most of the capacitors were high, some were quite high up to 50% high and some had very visible um, problems with, with leakage on the bottom and um, that seems to have sorted the uh, the squelch now so we can uh, we can get the squelch to, to function as it should do I'll just uh, try and adjust it there you go that's the squelch now there's, now there's no actual way of adjusting the squelch other than on the dial on the side um, but there's no uh, set, no way of setting any other thresholds according to the circuit diagram anyway but that's good so we actually have a working squelch now and um, which will make um, testing this with the other radio a lot uh, a lot nicer on the ear all right we've got the radio on we just can check the deviation we've got the SDR on and uh, you can see the signal there nice and strong there it is up there one two, nice uh, nice signal. Uh, deviation seems okay. One two three four five, and the tone uh, function works. That's the that's the tone function. Ah, okay. All right. Well, I think that uh, that just about wraps this up. The I'm just going to quickly test the power output because we've done a complete capacitor swap um, let's just just check the power output and tweak that and see if we can get any more out of it and then we'll stick the uh, the antenna back in uh, in circuit and then we'll tune up the um, the final uh, inductor for the antenna loading coil and um, we'll tune it up on the field strength meter and then wait for the postman to come because I've got another one of these to come and I've got to do it all over again right so back to the power on the two and a half watt scale the lowest scale and uh, we're getting again just over half a watt a little bit more as I'm squeezing the antenna get a field effect from the uh, my arm near the cable here so yeah uh, well over half a watt CV watts into that meter so um, we'll tweak it on the field strength meter and then uh, yeah I think that's uh, pretty much done the step antenna has worked very well I'm pleased with that. Um, got that from China. It took a while to come, but um, it's a nice, quick way of stepping in and out uh, the signal. Um, obviously, you can do it on that to a point, but obviously, the the smallest signal we can drive out of this is one millivolt, <laughs> which of course is uh, a thousand times too much uh, and more for what we need here. So we need to step it down. 
but I'm not looking at uh, accurate signal measurements when I'm doing this. What these walkie-talkies? I'm just looking at what the, the absolute weakest signal I can tune down to with this. So um, this is fine for uh, CB walkie-talkie work. You wouldn't use it in any serious uh, application. But there we go. So this isn't serious. This is a bit of fun, and it, uh, it took an hour or so to change all those capacitors, but. Um, I, I know sometimes I change capacitors and they don't seem to make any difference but um, in this case it certainly did it, um, it enabled the squelch function which was clearly having a problem there so um, right let's move on right we'll stick a, a fresh set of Dura cells in it and pop it in the battery cage um, like, you said, like you may have seen I've cleaned all this up and uh, hopefully that will uh, make a nice connection there and we'll do the final test with batteries as that's what it's going to be operating on out in the field. So um, fingers crossed this should be okay. Well, the loading coil is just there, and uh, we'll uh, we'll get it on the field strength meter. All right, that's right at the bottom of its limit anyway. Uh, that inductor, um, we screwed a little bit more out of it, and uh, that's the field strength at this distance, and that's running over half a watt. Um, if I had another another radio. I could just pop it by next to it just to show you how it uh, how how um, much less power the other radios transmit compared to this one. By comparison, we have a TRC one zero zero eight here, which is a lovely little handset. Actually, this one is absolutely like new. Um, in in fact, the box is almost like new. It's uh, hardly ever been used, and. Um, uh, just by comparison, I'll hold it next to the <laughs> to the meter here for you to see. Um, I think these are, are only a 50 milliwatt radio anyway, but with the same settings on the field strength meter, look, you can see it's not hardly moving. So this um, this radio is definitely um, certainly not two watts, but it's uh, it's it's definitely uh, a lot more pokey than your standard. Uh, sort of FM um, transmitter that I play around with, the sort of toy end of the walkie-talkies. This is certainly not a professional radio, but it's German-made and um, quite well-made, actually, um, I have to say. And uh, it's got a stonking great big antenna on, which I've just noticed. I don't know if I've got fully extended there. So, uh, yeah, um, I'll we'll we'll got to wait for the next radio to be delivered and. Um, I won't film uh, setting that up because it's going to be exactly the same as this one uh, and then we'll do a field test. Right, I hope if you've got that radio or if you're thinking of buying one that you found this useful, on the next episode we'll look at the other radio that I bought which was in a much much nicer box as you can see from this clip here. However the uh, the radio inside it had a few faults that this one doesn't have, so some broken tabs on the battery case and a few other little issues. And we also, uh, in a, uh, an episode after that, look at this set of uh, cheap kids radios which are a little bit of fun and were in immaculate condition but also had a few hidden surprises. So uh, I hope you found this useful and you've enjoyed it. If you could, please like and subscribe to the channel. It makes a great difference to me when you do that. And we'll catch you on the next one. 73.